How's it going guys, it's Mr Lone Wolf and uh, today I'm going to go and test out a few more mods that they've added in the last day or so. I'm mainly going to be on the uh, Summer Proving Grounds, they're pretty handy for that. When I first bought this for a split second I was like, is that a Range Rover? Like a Mark 1 type Range Rover that they've uh, made probably look slightly different. Look around to the side like, oh hell no, <laughs> it's nowhere near a Range Rover. It's more the front grille and lights that uh, look pretty similar. But yeah, it's like, whatever it is, it's uh, a lot smaller. That's not what she said. It's uh, It's got a few decent options though. You've got uh, pretty big tyres. I think these are like the yard tyres on it. Uh, you've got raisable suspension, roof racks, all that sort of stuff. Overall power wise and everything, it's definitely nearer to like in line with all the other stuff in the game really. It feels a lot like a, uh, yeah, just a base sort of scout. Not necessarily meaning that in a bad way. I've certainly been enjoying the overpowered nature of a uh, quite a few of the trucks in like recently given that you know for those of us on console that haven't had mods we've uh, spent the last nine odd months with uh, yeah stuff that's on the slower end so having stuff that goes a bit crazy is pretty cool but still this is a uh, not too bad it was uh, fun to have a little blast around in it I'm mainly on the uh, what do you call it the summer proving grounds on this uh, sort of tonight because it's, it's pretty good for testing mods to be honest, you can just go straight on it, build a mod, fly it around and then when you're done just quit the game. If I go and test it on my other maps, like my playthroughs, I just have to download the mod, pick like my first playthrough usually because I don't want to risk bugging my main playthrough. I load that up, build a truck, then I drive it around. I can't really drive around all over the place on my first playthrough because I've not got all the maps unlocked. Then I've got to take all the bits back off it, sell it all back and everything and then I've load up like another playthrough whether it's my second one or my final one uh, yeah build another one etc drive around unbuild it sell it all back and uh, it just takes quite a while to test each one whereas this thing yeah just cuts out a lot of the hassle just like say little things like I don't have to sell every item back the only reason I do that personally is uh, for example you can own some things on trucks and if you just if you still own them like as an example on the heavy wrecker you can have that rotator axle on the back if you sell the wrecker part first, it locks the rotator axle so you can't sell it back. And then if you want to install that mod, you will still own somewhere in your files that rotator axle thing. And I think that's where it can lead to stuff like just saying, you know, mod missing and all like possible bugs. I've not had any bugs as far as those trucks go, but yeah, I'm a little like, I think that's part of the reason why, because I've just been completely selling everything back uh, before I quit the game and everything. Again with this thing, it's a uh, yeah. I, personally, I would like a bit more power in it. As well with the yard tyres, there was some cooler tyres. I kind of I'm quite enjoying the raised suspension and the bigger tyres at the minute. But I'll be honest, I've never been a major fan of these yard tyres. Anyway, they look cool, um, but grip-wise and that, yeah, I wouldn't rate them that highly or anything. <laughs> they are made that fence out of, but stronger than the normal ones. Let's quick look in the interior, looks pretty cool to be honest. Some spares are kept inside it, which is pretty good. They should sort of take advantage of that option with uh, a lot of stuff really. Even stuff like, I've seen it said with the uh, loaf, it's a van. <laughs> and it you can't put any supplies or anything in the back of the van. That's like the point of a van. Yeah, you can see though, it's, it's just, there isn't a whole lot of power there. I broke the suspension at the minute, but it seems to be sitting at basically the same height. As well, with the repairs and stuff on the roof, you've got fuel, but you've only really got spare tyres and stuff. You've not really got any repair points you can bring out with you. Sorry, that's a little blast light. I didn't really take too long with that one. Uh, next up, I was going to go and test this thing out. It's another new one. I believe its nickname is something like the Apache Killer. Which, yeah, makes sense because it's a hell of a lot better than the Apache. Thing's got a ridiculous but good amount of power. Again, there's obviously other engine options that you can tone it down, but yeah, I was having a good old time in this. And it's got a lot of tyre choices, a lot of suspension options. You can have the uh, active suspension, but when I first bought the suspension, because it's in the lowered state, it then doesn't let you fit the biggest tyres. 
you might be able to leave the garage, raise the suspension up, recover it, and then put the bigger tyres. But in the end, I was like, sod it, I'll just go for the tallest suspension that stays like this all the time. Uh, yeah, I quite like these sort of wide monster truck type tyres. I've used them on, I suppose, I think all of the wreckers so far. Go for a little jump, see how well it does. <laughs> yeah. Took it like a beast. Yeah, I happen to like them when they look like this, <laughs> when they're slammed. And this thing actually still drives pretty fine when it's like this. It's uh, Obviously it's crouched down, but it's not to the point where it's dragging its chassis on the floor. That's what the, uh, I don't know, the normal wrecker, not the heavy one, we'll have to come up with some different names for them. But yeah, the normal one, kind of when I broke the suspension on that, I was absolutely stuck into the floor. I've got to admit, I did like flying down there and doing a little jump. As I said, this ma uh, this map sorry, is pretty basic, but it's, yeah, it's got the main things there. I mean, yeah, you got to jump, you got straight bits of road, you've got rivers, dirt roads, sort of muddy bits. There's a little kind of off-road course on the other side, which I think I head over to at some point. And there is the winter premium grounds as well, which then gives you all your snow and ice options. So, uh, yeah, I recommend using them, to be honest, I appreciate the heads up on a uh, yeah how to get on them I will repair it in a minute <laughs> but I was having quite a lot of fun like this and like I said sometimes no suspension is the best suspension because you can't really break something that's already broken that's my philosophy <laughs> it worked pretty well I only left this bit in here because I did actually climb up here and something a little later. This thing wasn't gripping uh, too well with it. I did try it at some other point when I had the suspension all fixed up, which I am about to do. Got a free bush on our way though. You can't knock a free bush. Uh, yeah, as for climbing up here, <laughs> probably the uh, damage suspension does help. One nice thing though, when it did have damage suspension, is because you sat extremely low, it was very difficult to roll even when you get to the high speeds and you fling it around the corner. It kind of just drifts and skids rather than sort of digs in and flips. And then it inevitably breaks its suspension at some point. But another nice thing about this truck, the add-on thing in the back is like 5,000 repair points or something. I think it was in this. Or if not, actually, I might be off on that. It might be about eight or 900, but either way, it's still plenty. You get a good, uh, good few repairs out of it. And yeah, this thing still drives fine when it has got the broken suspension other than get wedged on a rock like that. Was it? it might have been about a thousand points in there. Either way, it'll uh, keep you going for a good little while. Quite a nice little sort of engine sound. A bit of turbo wine going on or something. Uh, yeah, I mean overall this thing could go just about everywhere I think. And there is obviously different sorts of, there's a hell of a lot of tyres to choose from, so I could have all the chained options and that if I was on like this uh, winter proving grounds. See, so it does get a bit sort of, a bit floppy when you're skidding around at high speed. How quick the power kicks in though is pretty nice. You go take another, it's like launch control. Back to lowered. It's it's so hard. Like the impression of the headlights <laughs> shot about eight feet out of the uh, front of the truck. So it doesn't really take a lot of damage on the wheels. Now I have damage the suspension. Like when I hit those rocks, I didn't bounce off it and roll on my roof, but it also didn't take any hits to the wheels. So I sort of I got off lighter than I would if I did have suspension. That definitely popped some wheels. There's a nice little test though, that jump, just to see how things actually land and like some things are really springy and they sort of fling themselves over. And obviously, yeah, when it's lowered, <laughs> ground clearance is a bit of an issue. A 
had to go for another jump. I wanted to land one with full suspension. Took a good old hit, I'll give it that, but we're all good. Well, <laughs> for about five seconds until I turn around. Did it that way. Suspension deleted. But even going through this water with the in the lowered state goes through there pretty nicely. See, drift around that corner. There's no rolling going on, but then the lack of ground ground clearance gets me. It's got the old super winch on though. It's pretty handy if I do say. Well, it is on console because like on PC you can kind of select where you put the winch with the mouse. I think obviously on console we have to scroll through it so. It's good for just flinging a winch out in the general direction you're looking at, but uh, yeah, to pick a winch is can take you a while. So that's that one done. That was a good little uh, rally session with that. This is just a little thing of those trailers that are eight slot trailers, and uh, they're kind. Of, it said like road train ready. I assume I wasn't able to like attach it to the back of the trailer anyway, but because it's the way it is, like a dolly trailer. Uh, with the axles at the front as well. You can attach one to... I was using the club in this case, just because that's what loaded up on my last playthrough. It brings your trucks across from the last game you played to the summer or winter proving grounds. Um, yeah, and then I've winched to the trailer behind, but as you can see, it's all working very nicely. People were saying as well, the dollies on this feel better, and they do. They, they're a lot more substantially built dollies, and yeah, the, the one on that ramp flatbed, I just really don't like... It's like when you brake as well, there's no weight to the trailer. I was saying to someone earlier, it's almost like a hoverboard when you slam on it, just there's no resistance. It plows into the back of you, twists the hitch, the wheel tucks under the uh, trailer because it's like a dolly axle or whatever, and then it just flips the trailer. And yeah, that was only a quick look at those trailers. I ended up rolling and then, yeah, there was no option to recover. I just went back, grabbed the next one. Uh, this truck. It's pretty good. It's, again, definitely more tuned to pretty standard specs. It's uh, I don't think it's ramped all the way up on the power. It's got no high gear as well, which I have to say I was a little bit sad to see that so gone. I only use one of the gearboxes. The other gearbox option, though, was I think a four-speed gearbox, and that had even less gears. I'm sure this one has seven gears in the current state. But still, a pretty cool truck, pretty good-looking truck. The... Uh, sideboard add-on thing on the back I think you can get it in two slot version but then it has this one where it like drops the tailgate down and uh, I believe this is like a three slot cargo thing which yeah that's pretty cool I was just checking it I wasn't like I couldn't remember if I'd uh, put chained on or muds or what but they must be some kind of chained or or OP because they uh, they grip in this ice just fine I was about ready to go for a little drift. But yeah, I mean, speed-wise, it's not going to knock your socks off or anything, but it is pretty cool. It's got that, I don't know, just a nice snowrunner truck sort of feel to it. Again, it's not the sort of thing I'd want to spend all night going mad in at the minute, but when I'm back to doing like various missions and stuff on the playthroughs, then uh, yeah. I'll be interested in bringing this thing back out if I've still got it by then, if it's still on the list and everything. Because obviously I've only got a finite amount of memory on this game as for downloading mods, so... There's a few trucks I've not downloaded yet, because they're pretty massive on the memory, and I know I can unsubscribe to them. I tested that tonight, and yeah, it sort of gives me my memory back, but... A few people have been saying about... I assume a bug, where it says they haven't got enough memory left, even if they have. And uh, people have been saying to reinstall the game, which I get works, but I'm nervous about it as well. <laughs> I've seen some people reply and saying, yeah, I'll just wait for a patch. And I'm sort of similar, like, I I've done it before, and I know that if I delete the SnowRunner game off my PS4, it doesn't delete my save data, and I can reinstall the game, and then it'll just be untouched. But it still makes me nervous, because <laughs> I don't really, yeah, know, know enough about that sort of stuff that... It just panics me until until I get it back. But that is apparently a way to fix that if you're having that issue that there isn't enough memory. You can uninstall and reinstall the game. And that apparently works. Uh, yeah, like I said, unsubscribing gave me my memory back, so to speak. But I'm trying my best to sort of keep a nice little bank of free space just for whatever else they add. 
And yeah, this next thing is it called like the I can't remember something Maximus. It's pretty good though, to be honest. It, it's not that rapid. I think it would be nice if it had a bit more of a faster engine. The power to weight on it is not all that high, really. But and this takes up quite a lot of uh, memory. I think this is like 750 odd megabytes. And there's not a whole lot of customization options. Not that I think that's a bad thing, but I was wondering at first, like, where's all the memory being spent, so to speak, but the way it feels when you're driving it around, it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. It feels very, sort of, pretty realistic and fluid in the way it handles and everything. It's, uh, all the suspension, when you drive up rocks, it doesn't really troll you and just smash the suspension like it does a lot in this game when you go in, sort of, two miles an hour. I don't really know how to fully explain it, but yeah, it, it does feel very well, I don't know, programmed and like just the way it reacts to the terrain and everything is pretty nice. See, just the way it lands there, it doesn't just slam down and delete itself. It, I would say, is more realistic, sort of, with the way the suspension goes and everything. But like I said, I think, yeah, a more powerful engine would be nice, because even when you stick it in high gear... It. You have to wait until you do, like, build the revs up. Some trucks. It's good horn, by the way. <laughs> it's got that uh, move bitch song. Yeah, when you put a lot of vehicles in high gear, you can stick it in high gear like half a second after you set off. This one doesn't like that. It doesn't respond well to that. And I do think uh, the interior is pretty nice as well, by the way. Um, yeah, with this kind of truck, in this kind of setup. You'd think, really, like, it'd have no issues getting into high gear and sticking to that pretty well. Once you're in high gear, though, you can feather the throttle quite nicely, and it... you still got to keep a certain amount of speed for it to stay in it, but... Once you're in high and it's wound up, it's easier to stay in high than to get into high in the first place. For some reason, the that little patch there really doesn't like high gear. It stalled a few things tonight on that exact spot. And yet, at some point, you'll suddenly drive through the water later and it absolutely flies through it. So it just feels, I don't know, there's something that feels nice about driving it. It's a pretty nice engine sound as well, I uh, do remember. Oh, this is the one, I think, actually, that the various add-ons you can put on. There's like a rear bumper that gives you 5,000 repair points or something. That roll cage, I think, like the in the back, gives you 5,000. Uh, you've got a roof rack thing that gives you 5,000. There might even be a front bumper thing. They've obviously just added it onto like various little mods, but long story short, you can end up taking a shed load of points out with you, and uh, yeah, it's good. The more points, the better. See, at first when I was driving around, when I drove up that, um, like to do the jump and all the rest of it, I was... I didn't dislike it, but I was like, well, it's not that quick and whatever. But yeah, once I started driving over here more, doing a lot off ro more off-roading than that, it, it just, it does, it feels pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that's what she said. And it's very nicely weighted as well, low down, so it returns to its wheels pretty nicely. You can get away with quite a lot in it. <laughs> Let's drop the hammer and hope for the best. See there, it didn't just spring itself over to the side or anything. Yeah, there's the high gear though, it's uh yeah. That's probably the worst thing I would say about it. But we'll see, maybe in the uh in future if they'll add some more engines to it. I think it's only got about three engines, but the first one's like two or three notches on the power to weight. I think the second one bumps it up one or two and the third one again, but it's probably only a notch or so above halfway in the power to weight ratio so there's definitely room for a lot more and this is it in the water though it's a uh, you have to go really in this section with the current if you go against it it just sort of automatically near enough stops you dead just from obviously the way the game's coded like the river going against you must just add a load of resistance as you can see it didn't even drop out a high there so it's still wheel spinning and everything but the actual water just sort of grips onto you and uh doesn't really let you plough plow your way through. It's 
pretty good at going through deep water though, taking a little bit of damage, but it wasn't wasn't really moaning or stalling or anything. I, th I assume there is the equivalent of a snorkel. I can't see one on there. I don't think I specifically equipped one, but it's acting as if there is one. And again, I just have to come back and have a little uh, test around here. It's sort of like it, it's quite spongy suspension, but at the same time, I don't know, it's kind of got more resistance as well. Like I said, you're less likely to just knock it on something and have the equivalent of the suspension just smash up into your truck and then, yeah, delete half your wheel and your suspension. It uh, just feels more realistic, I would say. And I'm assuming that's where a lot of the megabytes go, so to speak. It, probably uh yeah like created their own suspension in a way and just all the way it the characteristics of the truck it moved to the first bit and looked pretty nicely but that second bit yeah waded through and went pretty slow so I just cut that out there is as well at the minute I didn't really use a lot of it but there is a little bit at the end um it's got like raisable suspension even from this setting which I didn't realize at first I think this is the crawler suspension or something. You see now, go for a little jump, doesn't delete itself there or anything. Sort of lands nicely and catches itself. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. That's when it has got the suspension raised up, but it's more, its ability to climb stuff is uh, pretty decent. Like most stuff, I wouldn't think you'd have an absolute chance at getting anywhere near that. Took a little bit of jiggling. I started kind of scooting along the side of the rock a bit, but I'd still say that's pretty impressive as far as stuff goes in this game, which is nice because, uh, yeah, I think this rock was still too slippy for it, but in those situations, it, uh, I think the game doesn't let you climb stuff as quite as easy as you probably should be able to in some things, whereas that feels a lot more normal. Um, yeah, this is like the custom rock crawler thing. It's pretty cool. Nice engine sound. Uh, looks pretty cool. Plenty of power to it. It's got very few customization options. Again, I don't. That's not a bad thing. It's just very to the point. You got three engine options. I think the top one has got like full power to weight. You got about five or six uh, tire options. You got ones that look like this, more normal, and then you got ones that are like like big paddles of rubber attached to the wheel sort of thing and uh yeah they, I tested a few of them out they uh, all work pretty nicely bit of a hit there but it's clearly got very high amount of suspension on it so I think I just did about 200 damage there and it's uh, barely marked it Of course, we have to go and have a little test. <laughs> Landed a bit dodgy, wiggled around now. I was like, oh no. Don't even know which way I'm facing. Fortunately, though, the winch works very nicely on it, but just the way when it drags you over, it kind of, rather than scooting along, you can see the axles all twist, so they kind of it encourage itself back to its own wheels. It'll sort of flex one way or another and find its way back pretty well, to be fair. Luckily, I was facing the right way already. Yeah, pretty decent speed in the auto. Uh, the high range is pretty damn nice as well. See, again, the water just holds you back, but if you go sort of back that way through it, it's, uh, yeah, a lot nicer. It can go pretty deep as well. <laughs> That's definitely what she said, but I went under some water at some point. I can't remember if I left it in the video or not, but, uh, yeah, it got... I don't know, probably like another vehicle height or two before it's stalled. So it's got the equivalent of like a snorkel that's sitting, yeah, fairly high above it. Of course, that's sending the little loaf. That loaf is uh, barely upgraded. It's got standard gearbox, no race suspension. It's got the stock engine and stuff, but still a goddamn horse of a vehicle. Just not quite as 
<laughs> Not quite as much horse. Uh, yeah, I assume this is made by the same guy that I just was testing that last truck because it's got the same horn on it, which, uh, yeah, pretty funny. Pretty cool interior view as well, I have to say, and it smashed into that anti-terrorist barricade pretty well. I think that was one of the few things. It didn't moan that, oh no, I wasn't in high at that point. Like I said, there was a few trucks that went through there and just on that exact spot just stopped me dead. As you'd expect, this thing does climb up very nicely. It's got, yeah, very good suspension. I mean, it is <laughs> literally custom built for this kind of thing, so you'd hope so. But yeah, even the way it climbs up these kind of rocks is uh, pretty cool. There's quite a few areas around the various base maps that I'll be checking out at some point. I did end up falling in there. Well, at this point as well, because I'm on the Summer Proving Grounds, I couldn't recover, so it was quicker just to go back to the garage and build another one, because, like I said, there's only about four different upgrades you had to kind of attach to it to get it fully maxed out, so it was, uh, yeah, pretty quick. I ended up falling in that hole about three times with <laughs> three different trucks. Again, just messing around. I, originally, I wanted to go in there and then see if I could climb back out, but every time I uh, sent a truck in there, I landed in some awkward way and it just wasn't having any of it. So I'll get up in the end. So this thing, by comparison, though, you can bang that in high range a hell of a lot easier than that... Uh, yeah, the truck I tested before this. But the truck I tested before this will be very nice on the base maps, kind of cruising around, taking various, uh, yeah, just shortcuts and sort of freestyling your way across the map. I do enjoy the top speed of some of these trucks, but it's the sort of thing I'll take to White Valley or whatever and go flying down the uh, runway and jumping off the cliff and all that, but when you're kind of zigzagging and, yeah, free freestyling through the forests and all that, it's, uh, you don't really tend to get up into the high end anyway. Yeah, at this point I was just abusing it really. So it took a lot more damage that time though. When I jumped over there in the, uh, again, the truck I tested previously, the suspension just felt a lot more capable of taking the hits. Of course, couldn't resist another jump. Um, yeah, as for the, some of the other mods, I've, I've downloaded a map now. I think I've downloaded that Canadian map. 2.0 or something. A few people have been telling me that's a pretty good map. I just didn't end up testing it tonight because other than the fact that I was jumping through all these different trucks. Um, yeah, if it's a map expir exploration it'll probably take me a bit longer and like I said because I was testing various different mods I didn't want to take all the mods onto a new map and bunch a load of mods together so I'll, uh, I will look into that pretty soon but yeah it was pretty cool testing some of these things out tonight. Like I said, I'd like to do a live stream too at some point, pretty soon. I uh, I need to pick a time of the day or night when to do it, I don't really know when, but I'd like to do some of the uh, missions and, yeah, do something like that instead. Again, this thing, it managed to climb up there, at least to the point where I went vertical and it stalled. I have now stuck a winch on something, but that was more to keep my nose end down. But yeah, it's nice still that this thing actually does claw its way up a lot of stuff. I've got like those wheels on that have now more got like the paddles of rubber that are attached to them. But there's a lot of things in this map you can winch to that are just like little bushes that drag along but they don't disappear afterwards so you keep grabbing them. They are a little bit annoying on this map. But yeah that's about it for today though. That's uh, all the different trucks I've been testing out. I'd recommend pretty much all of them. Uh, the first one's more the slower end. These are more the crazy end but yeah. That's about it. I hope you've enjoyed. Thanks for watching and I'll be back soon.